This chapter is uh, like uh, gives uh, you a little introduction about how to set a working direction uh, directory if you uh, if you need it and how to set up a, so suggest that give some other suggestions to to work on a team uh, so suggest us to uh, set up a project and use an ID. Um, so, which is like uh, uh, the the studio desktop environment for uh, dealing with your project and so the, all your analysis. Uh, I share my screen. It's a very so that there, there's few uh, indication uh, which might be useful, and uh, we we're going through some some examples. Uh, I made some like a few notes. But just to to have something to to show and share my screen. Uh, so there it is. Okay. So basically, um, the learning. Uh, this is this chapter two is project oriented workflow and the learning objectives are explain why set working directory function makes difficult to share code. Then we talk about describing the structure of a project and how the structure uh, makes uh, how that structure makes code more portable. And then finally, use an ID. Uh, IDE to work with projects. Um, okay, first thing is setting a working directory. There are several ways to make your life easier when working uh, on more than one file uh, in our studio, and it might be helpful to set a working directory, especially if you use .r scripts, so just the simple scripts in R more than uh, if you use R markdown or quartos for, for example files as this type of files have embedded a working directory which is where the files are saved in so are located while the R scripts have, have not any um, like working directory settled so you need to specify it otherwise it's uh, position uh, uh, your file so all, all the things that you produce uh, or in, in the main in, in your main working directory in R. So if you'd like to source other files in your R script, for example, or save the output, so you you are working on an R script, okay, and you want what you like to to save the output, uh, um, the things that you did in the same folder where you your script is saved. It might be a requirement to set a working directory, and this is to avoid error warnings. Because otherwise, if you like, if you, for example, attempt to sort uh, a, a function which is from another file, uh, R might not be able to find it if you don't specify exactly the, the directory uh, where the uh, your, your function is located. So let's have a look at some example. Uh, I saved an R script in a folder inside this project. Okay, so I, I am now in a project, uh, this book club, okay, on, on a project, this, this book club, and um, I've made a folder named script. Uh, inside this script folder, I saved uh, this two example one uh, dot R script. Um, and uh, uh, I'm producing these nodes from an a, a markdown file. So if I source the uh, my this script, R throws uh, a warning. So the file cannot be opened. Okay, there is no such a file directory. So the the file is not found basically, uh, to, to be more specific, okay, I am in this, uh, uh, I don't know if you can see my R, in this book club, uh, R, uh, W, D, okay, so this is a project, 
um, that I've made in R. And I am producing the nodes on a R markdown file. So what I did it is inside this project, I set up a new folder named script. Inside the script, there are some files. Okay, one of these uh, files is two example one r dot r, which is a simple function. Okay, it's a function that produces uh, some numbers and then plots it. Okay, if we like to see the output of this. Uh, this function is this. So if I uh, use this function, uh, do some numbers and say x1 and say 50 instead of uh, 100, click enter. So it produced like 50 dots on, on, uh, on a plot. So now I have this, this file inside the, the scripts folder. So I attempt to, um, where is it? I attempt to uh, source this file, okay? Um, if I don't specify that the file is in the scripts folder, R is not able to locate the file. So I need to be precise and specify where, 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 my, where, where is the file, where the file is located, okay? If I do source script, uh, and the, the file name, so that, that is actually sourcing the, the, the file. So what this is um, like uh, something that we need to keep in mind when we work on our markdown and we attempt to uh, source or locate other files differently from, from the main location if we are working on a project. And so, uh, but what's happened if we are working on an R script? So the R script, uh, R Markdown has, a, has this uh, uh, extra option that uh, basically all, all the things that you produce are saved in the, in the location where the file is saved. While the, the, the R script don't, don't do this. Basically, all, all the things that you do are located in, 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 the, in your main R directory. So the things that happen, um, when, if I uh, basically uh, do the same thing from an R script, uh, is basically I, I am in an R script, and then I attempt to source the same file as before. He cannot find it. So just as the same as before, and, but he won't be able to find it. So I, I, am, I have these two files, the R script and this one that I attempt to source in the same folder. So they are both in the script folder. But he's not able to find it. So because it's going to search on the main directory. So um, uh, what I did that is I uh, did this get working directory function to see where is where am I basically? Okay, to see why he cannot find. Uh, nice thing to mention is that um, if I do this on my machine. It says precisely what are the folders, all the folders, all the paths to the folders that I, uh, lead to my file. But when I produce a reprex, uh, basically it's like masking, uh, put a mask on the, on, the, on the folders names. As you can see, this, this is like scripted so that they, it's masked so you cannot see the, the, the real name of the folder. But um, so I, I see where am I with, the, uh, with this uh, get working directory and I understand that I'm not in the scripts folder. So what I need to do is to set the working directory to the scripts folder and then source the file. So at that point he is able to find. 
Oh, PMD here. <laughs> but a bit, a bit like articulated. Um, if we uh, go back here and have a, a look at some some uh, functions, okay, to. This. For example, if I do now, I am in this uh, in this uh, working directory. You know? Okay, book club uh, RWTF. Uh, if I do get working directory, it says exactly where uh, the, the the position of my project. Okay, if I uh, am on uh, an as script, uh, let's say th this one here in the function. Okay. If if I repeat the function, I I'm still in the same uh, in the same folder. So, uh, but in, instead, this file is inside the script. So anything I do here, uh, it, it won't be located. Basically. Okay. So uh, there, there are several ways to set a working directory. I can go to tools and then uh, uh, so I can go to session and then set working directory. And I can uh, set the working directory to project directory, to the search file location, or to file Spain location. Basically, if I am in my R script and I like to sort another file, uh, a suggestion is to set the working directory. I can even choose a directory where I, my, my, my source is located, or otherwise um, I can uh, set it to the source file location. Um, what my experience is, um, is that this, and, and this, same is the same thing is mentioned in the chapter. Setting a working directory, it works for the user who set it, but it might be a cause of a confusion or so issues when working on a team. And uh, uh, because other in the team that load the file uh, in their machine might have different settings, different names, different paths. For, for this uh, for the working directory. So obviously the path can be easily different. So just thinking about the username of the machine in use and then other files name can, can be fair as well. So a workaround that I found uh, really, you know, it's useful is the, this uh, package, a Studio API package, so you, it, you can install it uh, as usual with install packages and you install a studio API. And then uh, there are a few functions within this package. As you can see, um, that might be useful. You can see like get yet active document uh, context, which is um, this one that I've used here. If we run this function, we can see, for example, the uh, some some information about the document, the ID, the path, uh, even the number of rows, and uh, some some other uh, information. So you can use this this package. In uh, we are we are always talking about uh, when you work on on our script. Because this is mainly the issue uh, when you maybe do a shiny app and you want to source a file which is outside. Um, the, um, it, it might be useful to set um, uh, a, a working directory. And this is, might be a way. So you can do like set working directory, but instead of specifying your path, individual path, you, you use this RStudio API and this function, get active document context with the path. So uh, if you run this, this bit, this, the, 
this snippet of code, this, this function here, this way, anywhere you are, any machine, any in your team can retrieve the same, the same thing. Okay, so this is an, uh, one option, an alternative to set the, just set the working directory to the path. Then there is the here package. So if you use the here package, and you can install it as well with uh, install packages and here, um, etc. So there is this nice function, for example, set here. What does is basically producing, um, you can see it here because I didn't push it, but if you do that, you find that he produces this dot here location, okay? So anything you do, he now has positioned the, the, um, the, the project, which is already done, okay? But, you know, imagine that you are not in, on a project, you are on a folder, separate folder. Um, if you use this here, set here, he basically creates this dot here location that you cannot see, because if you look in the pane, you, you can find, this dot here, but you find it within, uh, so it's, it's a neat file because it works with the here package to locate the uh, working directory of your work. Okay, this. And then you can use here, here, so like you do here, here, uh, and this function here inside, you can uh, again set a path, but then you can incur in uh, um, team issues, okay? Because of different names. So main suggestion is um, um, are, are those, those things. Um, refresh uh, the session of your R. Uh, avoid setting a working directory if you don't strictly need it. Uh, you might need it. If you work on a R script and you want to sort or locate uh, outside of the file, it might happen that your file is inside a folder and you want something which is outside the folder or maybe inside another folder outside your folder. So it might be important to, it might be useful to, you to do this. If you work on a team, mind that names of the path can be fair. So there are some works around uh, to these issues. Uh, and this is the, the first uh, learning objective uh, about setting working directory. Then the, the, the second suggestion, um, which Can is- Can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, great. Uh, yeah, like it, it's, it's clear so far, but uh... I, uh, yeah, the, I have actually two questions. So the first is this package of RStudio API. Has any of you used it before or found it useful for some application? Because I haven't, I haven't seen it before. Uh, it's, uh, it's used a lot inside of use this. Um, I've, I don't think I've ever actually used it directly like this. And, and I think here, the package here is also using it. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I haven't used it directly. Yeah, I see. I'm just I... Googling it. I'm trying to find some uses for it, but I, have, I haven't used it before. Uh, and the second question is, so you're saying that you can, uh, it's not a bad idea to set the working directory if you are using an R script, right? If you are working inside, if you try to source an R script, that is in a different folder? Basically, it says in the book, it says that it might be because of an issue if you set a working directory um, when you work on a team, because um, who happens to receive your file and attempt to run it, uh, the first thing that you usually put the set working directory on the top of your file. The first thing that happens that is the path that's been set 
is different from uh, another person that open um, attempt to to source the file to to run the script uh, different from the one who's made it so yeah, true. True. yeah. <laughs> so i've used uh, this r studio rd get the key document mm -hmm. context because i found context because i found it on uh, uh searching on um, <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, Stack Overflow, and I use it when um, I made some some visualizations. Uh, I use, usually I use R scripts, not R markdowns for 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 the visualizations. And sometimes I need uh, things that are outside the folder, maybe just an image or things that uh um i just decided this is because for example i need to save the plot i made a plot and then i need to save if i use just gg save it automatically if i use an R script and i made a plot and then i use gg save automatically saves the plot on the main r directory so which is not what i want because i'm inside a folder which is inside another folder and most probably on a on a project but so it it, it might be uh, useful for me for example the case uh, to save the image inside a folder in my project i see so, uh, yeah uh, so mm -hmm. I, I used to set this uh their names the rb etc those things there to my image folder so in this way when i, I produce the plot and then save it, it automatically locates the output of my plot on a PNG file inside the, the image folder. Just a, a warning on anything you do with um, RStudio API, it only works if the person you give it to is also using RStudio um, as their IDE. Uh, like, you know, I don't know if you saw, but the, the runner for uh, the book builder failed because you had a library R Studio API in there and it, it gives an error of no you're not in R Studio so this won't work. Um <clears throat> which is I, I think I I assume the Stack Overflow you saw probably was from before when the here package existed because mostly people use the here package now because it works wherever basically. Um, and that's, you know, that works with, uh, um, the project, you know, our studio projects help take care of that as well, which I'm sure we're going to talk about in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah. but now I appreciate here more by seeing this line of code that, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, like a legacy. <laughs> Thanks for the explanation. Thank you, Frederick. Yeah. Um, Second suggestion uh, is to organize, keep keep organized, um, and um, the best way to have your work organized is working on projects. So I'm sure that we we might all know uh, how to make a project, but in case we don't, so you click on uh, this um, uh, top. Um, uh, right um, little ladder here, yeah? and then you uh, select new project. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing this now, but <laughs> then you can like follow the instructions, and uh, it's, it's very straightforward. Then you can uh, set up a new project. This suggestion as we can see when we are inside a, um, a book club, okay, the, this is a project and the result of a, the things that makes you understand as soon as you create a new project is this function, which is uh, typical of a project, this R project. So you, you then do not have any other files. So the first thing that you got is this, the name of your project dot R project. Then you, you keep organized. You might uh, have like make a, a book 
So you have this a list of files, or you might just have um, one R markdown, and then a folder with script, with R script, for example. You might have a folder with images. So it depends by the type of work, the type of analysis you're doing. But the, the main suggestion is that the best way to work with projects is that all, all the things that you are working on on a on specific project are uh, collected together. So then you can uh, divide your work within uh, some folders and everything, and then have other options to use inside here. Like you, you can use Quarto, you can use many things, but everything is collected like inside a main folder. So this is. And then a final suggestion is to use an uh, IDE, which is a, in this case, um, for example, the R Studio Desktop, because R, it's R, so it's like the engine of this language. And um, I can show you that R, for example, is. Uh, uh, Sham, Sham Sadin has a question. Yeah. Federica has his hand up. Yeah. Um, so thank you for doing that for the good work. So my question is like, you know, um, I'm not quite sure if it is uh, possible um, to run multiple projects in RCO because like in BS code, you can have multiple, you know, execution things current running concurrently. But in R Studio, if I open these projects, if I run, I'm running one script, I cannot run another one. Um, I don't know, um, like, uh, anyway. I mean, you can open multiple projects or you can run scripts uh, as a background job in our no, studio. Uh, no, I mean, in our studio, for example, this is a single project and I have two RMD open. Like for example, here I work one RMD and the second RMD, can I run them concurrently in the same project? Running as in building or? Yeah, yes, yes. Um, I think it builds as background job now. So depending how you execute it, yes. <laughs> so um, for example, you... if I'm running one, it's taking like long time. I cannot run, for example, if I'm running okay. zero one RMD and it takes long before it finish, I cannot run zero two mm -hmm. RMD. Is that correct? Yeah. That is you not. You can do a new session. For example, you run something and it takes a while. Uh, then you leave it there, it's working. You can open a new session. You click yep. on new session. It's open up a new session. For example, now I am in one project, but I can, uh, uh, it takes a, like, a bit. Again, I um, open a new session. I am still in the same project. But I can even uh, go out from this project. So I close the project and do something else, get inside another project, do other things. Uh, you know, uh, for example, uh, this is not here anymore, but uh, for example, I, I go inside another book club. I can do th things inside here. Uh, look on a, um, R markdown, uh, for example, meet the R markdown and see. Oh, I'm, it's better if I don't do this. But anyway, so I can I can meet this uh, while uh, the the other um, is still um, here and doing. This. Uh, it's happened to me with um, when when I, I do modeling. For example, a model takes a while. And this is easy. So <laughs> you, you leave it there. <laughs> it's working. And then you do something else. Yeah. You but you need, you need to open a new R studio, right? Like the sample, or, you need to. Or run it as a background job. You can run it as a background job. Yeah. Mm. So either way, uh, R studio yeah. has two, two ways to do that. You know, mm. it's just, it's because R is single threaded. So it ah. takes up the whole session unless you tell it not to take up the whole session. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, it, and cause you know, as you're working interactively, you want to stay in the same R session normally. 
because um, mm -hmm. otherwise, you know, you don't have whatever variables you've defined or that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it, you can you can choose to use multiple sessions with our studio with okay. either using, depending what you're doing, either running something as a background job or uh, opening up multiple sessions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, there's many things to say. How do, how do can can you set uh how do you set a background job, for example? Ah, so it it depends what you're doing, but a lot of times what you um if you want to run an R script, you just there's if you go to the background jobs tab and you click the start background job, it you can choose a an R script to run, um, and you can tell it what directory to work in and you can tell it whether you want it to get a copy of your current global environment to run with. Um, and then you just hit run or hit start, I guess it is. Uh, you also like if you um, just like control shift enter or command shift, shift enter on a shiny app, uh, RStudio automatically by default will launch that in a background job. Um, I can't, I don't, I don't know if RMD rendering currently is a background job. I don't have anything slow to try right now. Um, but I think like building the book, yeah, if you do build a book, that is uh, a background job. So you can do other things while it does that. Um, so some things are automatic, but otherwise you, you can uh, uh, manually go into that background job tab and deal with it there. And then I think it's in, um, can't remember where it is in the menus, but you can also do it via uh, other commands. And then of course the R Studio API package, I think also has a way to, uh, through code, launch something as a background job. I guess it must, because that's what they use. Or well, maybe not. Um, I'm actually curious now, I wanna see if I can find. Uh, yeah, so there's, um, uh, uh, job add and a whole, a whole bunch of job functions in the RStudio API package that let you launch things as background jobs, which is interesting. <laughs> uh, I have a follow up to Shamsuddin uh, question. So, uh, wouldn't it be easier to just go to the terminal and type R and then netter and then give the the rmd that you would like to knit and it, it run in the background it depends on the situation like there are probably cases where that would be easy um i don't know i sometimes the sometimes using a, a ui is also easier so It's all for me. Uh, I think it's um, um, there maybe more more suggestions. I don't know um, because I don't I don't use any other IDE <laughs> desktops, so I use just R R Studio and. Yeah, I think the the thing beyond just use our studio, the you know, the advice here is also actually work with pack or with um projects within our studio, which I pretty naturally have come into doing. Like it's really funny. Every once in a while I will um like maybe I'll delete the local copy of a of the last project I had been working on. And so when I load our studio, it loads outside of the, of any project. And it's funny to see the random windows that I'll have open because I haven't actually worked outside of a project in years. And so whenever it, it goes to the view of our studio, that's outside of a project, it's stuff. I, I mean, now I, I reinstalled everything, so it's gone, but it used to be stuff that I had worked on 
like three years ago was still sitting there in the our studio outside of a project interface because I'm almost never in that interface. Um, it's just it's you know once you once you work in projects, it, it makes things so much cleaner. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> And you can even have a project inside of Logic. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You can do. You can do. You can have a project inside a project. My my the uh, but this is not because of a problem. But maybe if if you got the GitHub connected with it with the project. You might have two GitHub pages. Why you have uh, uh, and and one contains two, and then the other one just one. So you can do that. Uh, just mind working directory <laughs> because when you are uh, setting the working directory on a project, it might be different from for the other project. Right. But yeah, you can have two projects inside. Hmm. We um I think we, we know how to set up a project and um, maybe connect the project to GitHub can be interesting. Uh, and that is very useful, useful as well, because Git has you um, saving all the things that you do. It's a version saver. So anything, mo any modification you do to your files, <laughs> it's recorded. So, they're there. So you need to uh, send it to GitHub, but uh, then you can have different branches, for example, and do different things. You have some modification on a branch, other modification on another branch. That is very useful. Yeah. Um, I was trying to see if, like, I guess we talked about it. Um, in week one, but I don't know uh, if this book goes into working with GitHub. Um, it must eventually. Anyway. Um, oh, and we are going to see more, by the way, about uh, file paths next week or next session, not next, which is not next week. It'll be in a couple of weeks. Let's see. Um, Oops, let's go to. I forgot to mention that the book, uh, I shared it back, uh, and uh, and this is something that I have seen it and I have uh, downloaded, but then right. that is not is not something that I use. <laughs> I I have a certain number of projects, but then I don't have, I don't not there are not that many, so I I don't have difficulty finding them. So basically, but. This Alfred, this project Alfred, for example, is a suggestion and it comes from different sources. So it, apparently it's very useful and you can, uh, it's an extension that you load to uh, your Chrome, uh, your browser. Um, and this, uh, uh, it's like a um, search uh, tab. Okay, that appears and that you call it from from this this uh, uh, from from Chrome as an extension, and then you search for your project, and it goes inside your R and find out automatically where the, the project is located. And after that, you put some like uh, three four uh, letters to uh, recognize the the name of the project. This hmm. is. Uh, yeah, that's interesting that it that it is a Chrome extension because when she wrote the book, it was just a Mac app. Um, 
So yeah, yeah. neat. Yeah. I'll have to play with that. Yeah, you can. Uh, oh, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I, it looks like it is. I, I'm looking like there's a version um, that appears to be this same thing. So. Uh, 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 because I'm, I saw it some time ago. And then um, <laughs> I, 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 uh, 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 I saw it because it's not. As I said, if if you have many projects, it might be useful. Otherwise, you in your R, you you go here and you have the list of the projects. So it's not that uh, uh, difficult. And then you can like find them or how, how can you uh, search for things in R, you know, you know uh, if you are not inside a project and then you you have your the, the list of your things uh, even even in, in, in your Mac so you see you have uh, the list of your files and you know what are the projects and what are not otherwise you go uh, in your spotlight search and search for the project. It does the same result. So. Yeah, I've never used anything like that. I mean, I just have a directory where everything is, and I'm able to navigate between them. But I could see it being um, somewhat useful. Yeah. And it does look like this extension is just for you if you have the Mac app, Alfred. So it's still Mac Mac only. All right. Um, so uh, the next two weeks, we're going to be off. And then the following week uh, is where I hope I um, heard right and signed up right that uh, you are signed up, Sham, uh, Sham Sadin to talk about the targets package outside of the book, if that's okay. Um, if you're not gonna be ready to do that, then we can just go on to chapter three. Um, um, yeah, I think um, um, I don't have the bandwidth. I intend to <laughs> read and you know present, <laughs> but I'm limited with the bandwidth right now. Yeah. Because um, I, in my you know last piece in my thesis writing, so, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, if you're writing, if you're, let's, we'll pu push that out because that one is a yeah. bonus week anyway. Mm -hmm. Let me delete this row. Oops. And, um, okay. So we will be doing chapter three on January 5th. Um, and, uh, Either I'll do it, or if someone wants to sign up, that is fine. We've got a few weeks to to figure that out, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, cool. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll see you all in three weeks. Then. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Yeah, Jim. and thank you, Federica. Thank you. Bye. Bye.